Most of the greatest humans who ever lived and those who succeeded in every field or in a bunch of fields, but those who had a specific path, pursued success in that path and had one or more achievements on that path they chose for themselves. Just saying. Namaste, people of this tiring but adventurous planet called Earth. Welcome with an amazing ovation to the 20th episode of History's Most Influential Humans. As always, I'm your humble host, Damilari Mapa. It's been a while though, but today I'll be talking briefly about the interesting life of a man who dedicated his life to capturing reality and showing it to the world. His name, Louis Daguerre. Born two days after my bed date, November 18, 1787. My bed is not November 18th, 1787, by the way. He was born in Comelles, near Paris, in France. Daguerre was popularly known as a French painter, physicist, and a brilliant inventor. Although little is known about his childhood and personal life, he became the apprentice of Pierre Prevost in architecture, theatre design, and panoramic painting and subsequently became extremely celebrated in this field. In 1821, the girl partnered with Charles Mary Bolton to create the first ever Diorama Theatre, a three-dimensional exhibition of pictorial views with various effects induced by change in lighting, and on 11 18 the first exhibit opened. Audience would average around 350, and most would stand. The diorama became extremely popular, and it is estimated that profits reached as much as 200,000 francs. <laughs> well, that was much at that time. The diorama prospered for a few years until it got burnt down in the 1930s. It was Daguerre's only source of income at the time, but it wasn't a total loss as the idea was reaching the pinnacle of its relevance. But shortly before the diorama burnt down, in 1929, Daguerre partnered with a man who had been attempting to obtain permanent pictures through the action of sunlight since 1814, his name, Nesfor Nipse. Nipse used a coating of bitumen of Judah to make the first permanent camera photographs. The bitumen got hardened when it was exposed to light and unhardened parts were removed with a solvent, although camera exposure lasting for hours were required. Nipse and Daguerre refined this process, but extremely long exposures of about 8 hours were required to obtain visible images on photographic plates. Unfortunately, Nipse died in 1833 and Daguerre was left to continue experiments for a better and faster photographic process. Until 1835, when by sheer luck, Daguerre discovered that mercury vapor drastically reduced the exposure time required to form a visible image on a photographic plate to minutes. And this was Daguerre's breakthrough. Subsequently, Daguerre decided to search for investors for his new and improved photographic process, which he named the Daguerreotype. But unfortunately, he didn't find any, so he decided to go public with his idea. And on January 9, 1839, alongside a prominent scientist called Arago, they announced and gave a description of his new invention at a meeting of the Academy of Sciences in Paris. It was the French government that later acquired the rights to Daguerre's new invention after the news of his miraculous photographic process spread, promising him and Nepse's son, Isidore, lifetime pension. In 19 August 1839, the French government gave the new invention as a gift, free to the world. Although, luckily for Daguerre, he had obtained a patent from the United Kingdom, paying royalties to Daguerre for using his new invention. Still in 1839, Daguerre was elected as an honorary academician in the National Academy of Design, and he continued experiments in making photography easier. Different photographic processes were invented after the guess, such as William Henry Fox Talbot's negative positive process and the wet plate process. The invention of handmade lenses also improved photographic processes. Since then, various discoveries and inventions have been discovered to make photography easier and more affordable, as it was initially for the elite back when capturing moments and memories were new. And today, this current generation has witnessed the somewhat miracles of the digital cameras and phone cameras, which would have been worshipped back then. Hmm. 
I wonder what the future holds though. Maybe there will be an invention that makes us take digital photographs by blinking our eyes. <laughs> oh well. So that girl died from an heart attack on 10 July 1815 in Bryce Man. I'm definitely sure I did not pronounce that right, but then it is located a few kilometers from Paris. <laughs> Until today, a monument marks his grief. The girl's name was also inscribed on the Eiffel Tower, being one of the 72 humans whose names are forever inscribed on the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. Well, at least until it falls something. <laughs> and that is actually a big deal. So that will be all on today's episode of History's Most Influential Humans, guys. I hope you learned something new and picked up one or two life lessons. I hope. Till another two weeks, fam. And please pray for me. I'll be traveling next week for something very, very important. I just felt I'd mention. Stay safe, guys. Peace.